I want to show you my favorite Sauron upgrade for under $25 because it just puts a big smile on my face and I hate the ugly part that it replaces. So what is my favorite Sauron mod for under $25? I've done them all, and honestly, the more power you make on them, the more they break. <laughs> so I think one of the most fun versions you can have of a Suron is just a stock bike. But I do think the headlights are crazy ugly, and you still need some organization for the like brakes and wiring and stuff. So for $24.99, you can get this downhill plate. They come in all kinds of colors. Black really works on most people's bikes because you can only get black ones in the States. But man, oh man, I just love it. <laughs> Look at that, $24.99 on Amazon, <laughs> you know? I've, I've got the link below if you want to support the channel, but just zip tie it on, organize, you know, your brake line behind there, all that. If you do do a headlight mod, bring it up over the top, you get a higher vantage point anyways. I've even thought about making a removable one on my bars, but I rarely ride in the dark anyways. This is the X160 that I turned into a Suron and then upgraded with the BAC 4000 and bypassed the battery. So I haven't ridden hard on it yet. So I wanna show you guys what that looks like because a lot of people thought it would never work with the smaller motor and it is a slightly, slightly smaller motor. But when I tuned it with Tenzik, we threw basically as much as you could throw at the stock Suron motor. It's just not that good of a motor <laughs> either way. And I can go so hard on this thing without anything happening. We have 100% battery bypass. This is more juice than you'd ever throw at it. And yeah, I'm just gonna open it up through Grindhard's property and show you guys what this thing can do because it's pretty sick. This is our main rally loop on the property. It's pretty wet, so I'm gonna take it easy. So much fun. And we have some new trees to hop over because there's a big storm, but full throttle, uphill. This kicks so much harder than a stock sir on X. And just as hard as the sir on X with the bypass battery and a BAC 4000. I've ridden both off-road. I cannot tell the difference at all. So yeah, haven't had any problems with any motors overheating, anything like that. I mean, obviously it's frozen now, but I still rode this all summer and it was fine. This is the Enduro loop that we rarely show in grind hard videos because the only thing that really fits on it is two wheeled machines, which we build very few of, but just goes up Ethan's entire property line, basically. Man, I haven't ridden it with 100% battery in a while. It just has so much torque. And then we built a giant teeter-totter out of fallen trees. And unfortunately, last winter, it snapped in half under the weight of the snow. But it's still a little fun A-frame to ride on. wet wood, the best surface for small rubber tires. Ah, uh, there's snow on the first balancing log. <laughs> that seems kind of sketchy. <laughs> See the second, oh, the second one's snowy too, but yeah, the Enduro loop is mega sick. Fifty-eight tooth sprocket on this thing. That comes stock with a 160. 
and then I just have I'll put my tires below but love them I believe it's the track master up front it's really knobby they're also good in the rear but I really like this Kinda it's a Shinko in the rear it's the stickiest rubber I could find that fits the stock stir on wheels love it I have from the Suron shop their linkages that are much stronger those cast aluminum linkages the cast aluminum linkages just really suck so that helps lift up my back a little bit makes riding a lot easier and more fun it's a little harder when the ground's frozen then besides that, I have a floating rotor up front. It's a little bit bigger than stock. And besides that, stocks are on. <laughs> and the number plate just sets it off. I'm going to put one on my black bike and show you guys what that looks like soon. The 72 volt build is almost finished. Just having a really hard time finding the right brake setup. I'm trying to find one better than what most people use online to get the 220 millimeter discs, but I just can't find anything that's that good. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think it's worth it so far. And I have big heavy wheels on that thing and it just works out fine, but here I'll just punch it straight up this hill and you guys can see what kind of power we're looking at. It's super muddy, but it's all good. This thing has it where it counts. <laughs> Wheelied out the top and that's with a 58. You can imagine how easy that is with a 64 or something. Oh yeah, that's my favorite little rally machine. I honestly think I'm gonna sell it and then do a full new Saron build pretty soon. So keep your eye out on the Facebook group. This will be up. I'm gonna try to get too much out of it, but it really doesn't have any miles on the frame. A few on the battery, nothing much, but it's already bypassed and ready for the next person to take it to the next level. Still trying to collect my thoughts and compare it to other motorcycles. See like the 72 volts really even worth it at the end of the day. I'm really not sure. Let me know what you guys think if you've done both. I mean, power time, how much more likely you are to break everything. It just doesn't seem really worth it to me. I loved when I first got my setup and all that new stuff, like so sick. But then when I started breaking stuff, I kind of like, Change my mind a little bit. <laughs> Project like sleeping on the shoes. Yes, it is. <laughs> 